Hi, my name's Shawnee Davis, and this is Tycoon Talk, where I get to spend some downtime with the biggest names in business. This week, I'm chatting with entertainment mogul Francis Loy, who's changing the landscape of Macau at the helm of the Galaxy Entertainment Group. Hong Kong is one of the greatest business cities on the planet. It produces millionaires faster than anywhere else in the world, and making money is a favorite pastime. It's also getting harder, and the question is not just how to survive, but how to thrive. I've interviewed and photographed some of the biggest celebrities in the world in my time as a magazine editor, and successful people all seem to share similar traits. I'm on a quest to discover what drives a tycoon to rise above the rest, not just to be rich, but to dominate an industry. I want to get behind the public facade and reveal their true personalities, as well as their secrets for extreme success. Francis is the son of Dr. Liu Chi Wu, Asia's second richest man. But not content with walking in his father's shadows, Francis has spearheaded his family's investment in Macau with the Galaxy Entertainment Group. I catch up with Francis in one of the luxurious restaurants high above the company's flagship resort. We're looking down at this incredible view. When you were studying engineering at Berkeley, did you ever think that you would be up here controlling all of this? At the time, the company and my family was more involved in construction and construction materials. So my ambition at the time was to be a uh, engineer who would basically do road work and uh, mining, quarrying at the time. So no, not, not very glamorous then. Not, not very glamorous <laughs> stuff like this. <laughs> so how did you get from mining road work to building one of the biggest casinos and resorts in Macau? Well, this is really a, a journey so far. Uh, with great fortune of seeing Hong Kong actually going through the 60s, 70s, 80s uh, development and explosive growth. So that was when the family and my father and me had a chance to actually start to dabble with a little bit more glamorous stuff like hotels, like real estates, like offices and so on. I also had the fortunate opportunity to be studying uh, overseas in, in Berkeley. So uh, I have the chance to look into uh, California, you know, uh, surfing, beaches, Las Vegas, and I also have the time to actually go to Miami, New York, and see all these great, exciting places. So you took a lot of inspiration from the US and put that into this and made it more Chinese. What I saw in, in in the States was, if you want to do something, you have to do something big and scalable. The place got to have a human elements to it too. It goes back to about 20 years ago when I was back already in Hong Kong working, but I was traveling in the region. I went to Burma, I went to Malaysia, I went to Thailand, and then suddenly I see all these great places where you know uh, the culture could be very interesting for Macau as well. Apart from Hong Kong and Macau, you know, Southeast Asia was actually the most preferred tourist destination for mainland Chinese. Then I asked myself the question, what do I need to provide to the customers what's such that they would like to come and visit our place other than the others? Were you very hands-on with this design? Yes, I was. At the time when other people were uh, more interested in replicating what they have done in other parts of the world, and we were asking ourselves the question, how can we be different? So we sort of adopted this blue ocean strategy, and being an Asian, then we say that maybe we should have a theme where it should be world class, but it's still Asian. And this is why you can see what we have here is a 2,300 rooms hotel, phase one, and in phase two we're going to 3,600 rooms. But we still want it to be very Asian. Can I ask you why, why are the windows gold? Is that because it's Asian or because the Chinese like gold? Uh, we felt gold is a very lucky color. Okay, you see right. how we felt that by giving people a gold image to it, they will come in here and feeling lucky. In 2002, in a joint bid with Sheldon Adelson, Francis and his father won one of three gambling concessions granted by the Macau government. However, the partners split in 2003 over differences in management style, opening the way for Galaxy to pursue its own expansion plans. So when you came into Macau, you were a relative newcomer. How did you manage to turn the Galaxy into the number two property here in Macau in such a short space of time? We, we put a hot, lot of hard work into it, but I think the more successful components to our story is because we know the customers. And we have to be visionary because uh, China is a very different country than what we have saw in the previous decade. 
China is undergoing a very explosive growth. Right? Even the people are changing so rapidly, so fast. And you ask yourself the question, in 10 years' time, what does he want? You know, in the next 15 years' time, what does he want? If you can answer that question, then maybe we'll be on the right track. See, that really interests me. I mean, you seem to be like um, very attuned to what the customers want, and yet you started out designing roads and mm. thinking about mines. Do you think you were born with that talent, or is it something you've developed? My engineering background helps me in actually making all the thinking a process. You see, so I always, when I start to do all our things, I always at least have 10 questions in front of me. That's what my professor tells me. Okay, put the next first 10 questions on your list and you try to answer them one by one yourself. If you could sort of basically could be able to say that, yes, I'm happy with the, all the answers, then I think he said, you'll probably have a better, much better chance of being successful. They also uh, have an have a old Chinese thing like, uh, we always want to think big, but you want to be careful at the same time. So combining the two, this is what we get. Are you glad that you took this path down the hospitality route rather than the mining and road building route? I haven't seen nothing like this, which is so explosive, so successful uh, in the last 100 years. I mean, I've been reading history and so on, and I think uh, the last 10 years has been the most successful 10 years in the history of Macau. And, uh, and you're very I'm lucky to be here, right? To be a part of it. Yeah. So let's go back to that list of 10 points that your professor told you to write down. What would be your list now? One of my concerns at the time is whether we have the infrastructure to bring the customers into Macau. Because at that time, the high-speed train was not completed, the bridge was not been mentioned, and the border uh, gates was closed. So all that eventually, one by one, is being lifted. With so many people able to uh, have an easy access into Macau, what can we do to keep them satisfied? I think one of the things we certainly need is more hotel rooms. Uh, more probably hotel rooms? More hotel rooms. Because Can't you, be. Really? We have yes. enough hotel rooms now? No, in, in, in Hong Kong, <laughs> you know that in Hong Kong we have 70,000 hotel rooms. Right. Even in Singapore, we have 50,000 hotel rooms. Right. But in Macau, when we have 30 million visitors a year coming through, we only have 22,000 hotel rooms. So we have a long way to go. And what's your vision for the future? We have some shopping, but it was just a very small time shopping. So this is why in the second phase, uh, when this open up next year, we hopefully we're going to bring a lot of shopping into our real estate, into our property. And we felt that, you know, our customer, like we all keep saying that, it's going to be evolving. It's only gamers coming into Macau for a casino experience. That was 10 years ago. But I think with the new style customers coming, especially those people from uh, China, these people are not looking for just one experience. These guys are more now looking for a holistic experience where gaming is only part of it. They want a lifestyle experience. They want to see a show. They want to eat fine food, wine, dining, entertainment, and of course, shopping and conventions. What's your favorite part of, of this resort? Is there a spot that you like to go and chill out? Or <laughs> do you go and dive in the wave pool down there? Well, I wish I was 25 years <laughs> younger than I will do that. But no, I probably my, my relaxed place after work, after dinner, was to go to the uh, whiskey bar yeah. and have a short cigar in my hand and maybe a two shots of whiskey, finish it and go home and sleep. Only two shots? Uh, maybe a little bit more sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> A Scottish whiskey bar with an open fire in an Asian-themed resort seems a little incongruous. But Francis clearly knows his Chinese customers and their desire to experience heritage and luxury at the same time. When we think of Macau, we think casinos, we think people in big hallways gambling. Mm. So why have we got so much green space here? The question is, what would be the first things that the customers want to see when it comes to an uh, Asian resort like this? And definitely would be a lot of swimming pool. And we have about 500,000 square feet of uh, deck space it's here. Huge, isn't it? Huge, yeah. yes. And then we say that's the biggest in Macau. Right? Probably is one of the biggest in, uh, in, in, in Asia as well. Wow. Uh, so this is why we put in this uh, wave pool. In our phase two, Sean, that we're going to sort of like, do another water uh, feature attraction. It's going to be a lazy river again. Uh, we hope that it's going to be the, also very successful. Lazy river sounds like my kind of attraction. <laughs> that's great. Okay. <laughs> We head over to the other side of the restaurant where the view overlooks Hung Ching Island on the mainland Chinese side of the estuary. So now we're on the other side of the property looking over the future of Macau. I feel like I'm playing that game Sims, you know, when they on the computer where you like build a hotel here, put a car park there. Does it feel a little bit like that? Uh, 
Yes, I mean, when you are actually up on top of the roof and looking down, you can actually see, oh, this is phase one, oh, that's phase two, so it's amazing. We've heard that you've just purchased this casino down here. Somewhere. We did. Uh, why? Because it kind of looks a bit shabby, to be honest. I think on that far side on the left, actually, you can see our phase two. But in fact, we have a newer baby, which is going to be bought earlier than that. That's Green Grand Water, which we purchased only last year. And we're spending uh, millions of dollars now in refitting the place. Oh, and it's scheduled to be open early part of next so year, like ahead of our phase two. And I think over on the other side of the river, actually you see the future of Macau as well. This part is not Macau yet. This is Hong Cheng Island, belonging to the Zhuhai government. Oh, right. But I think the Macau government and the people of Macau has a great uh, vision about what they can do uh, over there. You see, Macau to start off is a tiny little city. We only have 28 square kilometer and about 600,000 uh, people in here. So uh, we are now basically quite constrained about how big and how prosperous we could be by staying on this side uh, of the island. So you're this basically expanding why, over there? Yes, we want right. to expand. What you're looking at is something that built within the last 36 months. I think that's what everyone in the world is so amazed about with Macau, is the pace of change. Absolutely. It's relentless. When we come back, Francis gives me the VIP tour around his vast resort, and we go for a drive around the Koh Tai Strip. Plus, I ask him about the tougher times he faced during the 2008 financial crisis. Welcome back to Tycoon Talk, where I'm catching up with CEO and Vice Chairman of the Galaxy Entertainment Group, Francis Loy. Francis is giving me the VIP tour around the massive resort that is set to more than double in size in the next few years. Vegas will always be uh, the entertainment hub of uh, the states, and I definitely see that Macau will be the uh, center of uh, entertainment for China and Asia. We have 1.3 billion people in China, and there's only one uh, gaming hub uh, that could be uh, legalized in uh, China. And I'm confident that in three to five years' time, you will see a definite transformation of Macau into a place where it is going to be more holistic, more top of the world entertainment in Macau as well. Now, there's a lot of competition in Macau. Is there enough for everyone to have a bit of their pie? Absolutely. Uh, right now, the market is already, already over 53 billion US dollars market in Macau. Everybody is uh, enjoying record growth year on year. So yes, I would say that all six of us are happy and all six of us are trying to do and make sure that we will uh, support the uh, growth and the, uh, be make sure that Macau will become the uh, world-class entertainment center. Is the party ever going to stop? The market is highly underpenetrated at the moment, Still, Sean. Right. Yeah, I feel for the next 10 years time, I absolutely do not see that uh, there will be maturation yet. Francis shows me one of the luxury villas, where I have a chance to ask him about success, future plans, and the influence of his father. Francis, we're in this beautiful villa. It makes me want to ask you, what's the secret to your success? Our oh, success, I would say vision and teamwork. My senior executive team has great leadership, and they're all role models for our staff. So when you, everywhere you walk in Galaxy, what I'd like you to see is that every waiter will turn to you, look you in the eyes, and put their hand on their heart and say, how are you, sir? And that's very much an Asian characteristic, don't you think? It Asian is. service being very yes. good. I've been around, you've been around, but you could say definitely, confidently, and say, this is here that you get the best service. Now, of course, you've had a, a very big role model in your life. Your father was a very successful businessman in his own right, and he's still the chairman of this company. How much influence does he have on your day-to-day -day activities here, and how much did he inspire you to be the man who you are now? If you talk about influences, I always look up to my family, uh, my father and mother as great role models for me. I mean, for him to be so successful uh, in Hong Kong and staying so humble and respectful, I think that's a great model for me to learn too. And wh where does that humility come from? My father, I think he's another legend, as you know, uh, in this part of the world. He come into Hong Kong uh, during the Second World War period, penniless. He started to sort of like, uh, you know, start from bare shed and nothing else. And he was able to, within a short 35 years, 40 years time, be one of the tycoon in Hong Kong. This way, it makes all of us understand that if you have a passion, if you are willing to work hard and being to take a little bit more chances and be visionary, you can be successful in Hong Kong. 
And of course, timing is very important. Do you think he could have done that now if he came to Hong Kong? I guess every generation have their challenges and opportunities. I think you can see my father when he was going through the Second World War, he went through the same uh, development like Hong Kong, where he moved from manufacturing into real estate development, into hospitality. And for me, for example, I, this, I got this opportunity of, of, of the century to be able to, to be in Macau at the right time, where you see under one country, two systems, suddenly the central government will allow casino to continue uh, to open in uh, China. And this is the only city in China that could have gambling. You know, what more can you want? And that is the opportunity of the century. That's right. Our vision is that we see a super industry building up. Okay? I can see that with the gaming on one side and the entertainment of uh, the other side, if you merge the two together, a super industry will be born. Now, for a super industry, you kind of need a super city. What I see in uh, San Francisco Bay is that you have so many great cities being joined together, either by highways or bridges. I can see that happening in Zhuhai, uh, Hong Kong, Macau and Shenzhen as well. All these great places are now being connected either by bridges eventually or by superhighway. We go for a short spin around the Galaxy Complex and up and down the Kotai Strip. I asked Francis about the tougher times that the group has faced, especially during the financial crisis in 2008. Francis, it hasn't all been easy for you. No. In 2008, you stopped construction here, and there was a, basically a building site for a few months at least. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit? Oh, sure. Let's, let's clarify that we didn't stop the work. Mm -hmm. We slowed down the work. Right. That makes the major difference. We did not cancel the contract. Mm -hmm. We don't have to fire anybody. We're just telling the contractors and our labor that, look, bad time is rolling in, why don't we just take a little bit lesser pay, each of us, but each of you will continue to work for us. So, when the economy recovers, we're able to step on the pedal and we go full throttle again. You're ready to go. That's right. I know that if there's a challenge, there will be a solution and there will be opportunity. Actually, we did a couple of uh, stock repurchase such that we were able to uh, get, uh, buy back some loan at a major discount and by the time we roll back out again, we have a stronger financial balance sheet. Where does the rise of Macau leave Hong Kong now? All the money is being made here. What's Hong Kong's future? Mm. Macau, I think in the last 10 years time, has actually uh, matured from a little kid, a little brother, now to be as big a brother as Hong Kong. And it's because of a very supportive uh, population because of a very supportive, uh, business-minded government and with the help of the central government. These are the advantages that we have and this is a miracle. But at the same time, I feel Hong Kong can be just as good, it can be just as powerful. Every generation have their challenges and opportunity. Like in Hong Kong, in the 70s, it was the manufacturing opportunity. 80s, it was the real estate. 90s, it was the stock market and open up of China. Right. I see a great opportunity in Hong Kong with the opening up of the uh, border gate with Hang Sheng available to us, is Chen Hai available to us, Nan Sha available to us. I see great opportunities. Mm. Right. And I feel that you know the, our younger generation should understand China, understand the policy and make use of it. I did. So it, accept Hong Kong's fate as part of China rather than being isolationist. That's right. I see opportunity in Macau when Macau op uh, returned to uh, China in 1999. I saw there was opportunity in Macau when the gaming license opens up. Right. I also see the same opportunity in Hong Chen and Chen Hai and Hansa. The question is, which entrepreneur, young generation people, are willing to take the risk and move there and start to develop great things? Top three tips for entrepreneurs in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. Well. If you want to be successful, first of all, you have to have the passion. You have to have the fire in your belly to make sure that even though there are challenges, there are risks, that people want to talk you out of doing things, you have to stick with it. The number two tips that I'd like to share is that I think it's honesty, right? Because if you want to do business, you're making sure that your partner would understand that you're an honest person and you are a guy he can go to war with in the future. Good tip. Third tip. Third tip, hardworking. All right. How hardworking are you? 
right. There is nothing that would be handed on a silver plate for you just like that. There's no free lunch, right? Everybody in Hong Kong and Macau and this part of the world are so competitive. So you have to just have to work hard and commit yourself in working hard to earn a living. That's very inspiring, thank you. Well, let's get out and see the fruits of your labor once more. <laughs> We arrive back at the main entrance of the resort, where we can take in the sheer scale of Francis's achievements. What's the hardest thing about your job? In Macau, in the last 10 years, this has been a miracle. This has been explosive growth. And the hardest thing right now is good leadership. Because we are growing at, what, like 40% year on year easily? Mm. Our property is going to be doubling almost every a few years time so in order to cope with the expansion and the demand of the customer and meet with the competition i think the hardest thing for me is to develop the next generation leadership such that they would be able to share all the burdens that we're doing today will your son do that one day well he's learning yes he's learning his ropes but uh, i think it's too uh, young to tell uh, if he's willing to work hard and uh, i will give him this chance but I also consider this, uh, John, is that the ownership and the management of the company can be separated. Right. Now, you can own the company, but if you prepare not to work as hard, then it's a different story. Right. Then you should give it to somebody else who are willing to work hard and take the company to a higher level. There must be something fun about doing this job, otherwise we would be doing it. What's the most pleasurable thing you get out of what you do? Well, actually, the satisfaction comes from seeing the customer, the sp they put on a smile on their face, and they have come to me and say, look, this is a great property, and next time around, I want to bring my family over too. Right. Right. That tells me that being a, wanting to build a, a dream integrated resort, and I hope that I'll reach there one day. Francis Law is not the flashy casino magnet you might expect to be running such a high-end operation. Diligent, hardworking, and surprisingly humble, he hasn't basked in his father's success either. With an engineer's approach to luxury, he's built on the family legacy with his own highly successful formula of bringing international flair and influences to a Chinese market. For Francis, an Asian heart will always win.